Hi everyone, Lisa Stones Peck from Spellbound Miniatures here. Welcome to our YouTube channel and the Apothecary Cabinet Tutorial. Today we're going to make first the base cabinet. I'm doing it in three stages. Um, the base cabinet is kind of the mainstay, the one that you might want to make and not necessarily make the shelves or the other bits. So we'll start with that and the whole of this project, except for the handles on the drawers, um, is made from basswood. And I think it can be a little daunting to use basswood, so I'm going to go right back to the beginning and explain to you how I cut these pieces from basswood, and hopefully you'll be able to get the same results. One thing to definitely make sure is that you're using basswood. There are some products that are almost like a plywood that sandwich basswood either side of a, of a ply inner and it makes it very difficult to cut. So you do just want pure sheets of basswood. This is 1.5 millimeters thick and I used the Cricut Maker with the knife blade and housing. Um, not the Cricut Maker 3, I don't have that. I have the standard Cricut Maker and the knife blade and housing and the purple strong grip mat and make sure that you tape the edges of your basswood uh, right around so that it doesn't move when it's cutting it. And another thing to be aware of, although you might not want to worry about this when you first make it, is the grain of the wood. And can you see there, the grain of this piece is sort of going that way, and the grain of that piece, I don't know if you can see it, is going that way, but now I've stained it. The stain does bring out the grain, but it's a bit hard to see on camera. Uh, it doesn't matter for this piece. On that side, they're both going the same way. So I wanted to show you the difference and it might matter to you or not and it really you do see it more when you stain it so bear that in mind when you're laying your pieces out in design space and I'll show you how to do it in a second that you can reorientate them if you know that your wood is going the wood grain is going a certain way but if that's a bit overwhelming don't worry about that by the luck of the draw it'll look it'll look fine anyway um, and I didn't actually, one of my shelves is going a different way to another and I don't think you'd ever notice unless I pointed it out to you. So let's go to design space. I'll show you how to um, upload the file and rearrange the pieces on the mat if you want to. And also um, there's labels on the pieces and there's an alternative, alternative way of labeling if you want to do that. So I'll see you in design space. Okay, so here we are in design space. Click upload. You would go to your files here onto your desktop or your PC or wherever you're using your design space. And you will need to use it on a computer because you can't use the knife blade in the app at the moment. Um, click browse, go to the folder and import it. And then it will end up here and click on it and insert it. And at the moment, since one of the updates, some files are coming in almost super, super large and people are seeing this and going, help, help, the files corrupt. And it isn't, it's just come in super sized. So, um, and that's not just miniatures files, that seems to be um, quite a lot of different SVGs. So just make sure you can always reduce the screen sort of zoom over here and also the first thing we always do is check that that green square measures an inch by an inch so hide everything over here in the layers panel go down find the green square unhide it click on it and make sure that you are in imperial not metric and we, when we click on it here, we can see it hasn't come in at one inch square. So change that to one inch square, make sure that padlock is locked. So the proportions are locked. And then when we come back over here and 
reveal everything we know they're now in 12th scale. So that's the first thing to do. Check that the inch square measures an inch and that you're actually in imperial settings. There are labels on these pieces and you can see that when they import, it imports as a cut line. Design Space doesn't know that it's text. So you have two options here. You could remove that from all the pieces by clicking the hide. So if we look for BK, where is that? Uh, there, there, and there, BKD. Somewhere on here I'm removing um, labels. There we go, that one. And you could go and remove the labels all like that if you wanted to, so that it doesn't put them on your pieces. But if you do want the labels, make sure that you change them over here from basic cut to pen and then it will draw them and over here you'll see it says pen so if you want to select more than one at a time click and then press shift on your keyboard and then you can go and select all the letters and then I haven't done them all here but this is just to show you how it works make sure it says pen and if you click make it, bearing in mind we've done some now and we haven't done others, you'll notice that these ones say pen and it's put the ones that we haven't changed yet onto another mat, but they're not on the pieces. So what you also need to remember to do if you want to label the pieces is to attach them to the shape that they're on. So. In design space you can just drag around a box around those pieces or oh, we'll need to ungroup the whole one first you could do it on a file as a whole but then they're fixed in this order on the mat so that's selected these ones down here the cut shape and these ones and you would click attach and then that's put them onto there now you can't see it now but they are on there so that when you click make it, one of the pieces over here now will have them attached, but you can't see that. So you'll need to decide if you do want to draw the labels onto your pieces. If you do, change them to pen and then attach them onto the pieces. If you don't want to draw them, you just simply hide them. And then there's another way, because sometimes, especially on wood, if you're going to stain it and you had drawn the label, that might show through the stain. You can put a pencil in if you can find one that will fit in the in um, clamp A and you can get adapters. So you could get it to write the label in pencil. But if you don't want to do that, what I'm going to suggest now is a different way of doing this that means you can still easily find out which piece is which, but you don't have to draw on the shape. And that is to get a sheet of either copy paper or craft board, and we're basically going to create this on the craft board or copy paper, almost like templates. So. I'll start again, we replace the canvas, we upload a fresh version of that file. We want to make sure that that green square is an inch, so always do that first. Hide it, click on it, check the padlocks there, make it measure one inch by one inch. And then we want to hide the green square. I want to select all of the text. So we can come down, press shift whilst we select them. So I think that's all of the text. Go over here 
and write draw and then we can leave this in this sort of shape or ungroup it that's up to you but for ease I'm actually going to leave them I've selected everything here and you can see it's selected everything including the text because it's all greyed out and I'm going to hit attach now when I go to make it it should give me when it's thought about it one mat which has pen used to see, used to say draw but now it's pen and then basic cut and it's put them all in the order that they were attached and I've left it like this so it's easy for you to see at the other end why, why I've done it this way I'm now going to put a sheet of craft board onto a mat and I'm going to get the pen to draw the label and the fine point blade to cut it out and then I'll see you back in the studio with the results okay so this is the result it's a sheet of craft board on a mat and you can see there hopefully that it's labeled the pieces um, and I haven't got it laid out exactly the same way but then you can take them off the mat we can easily if you're not sure because sometimes some pieces look very similar but they're different the dimensions are different you can measure them with a ruler but when it gets to millimeters or um, a tenth or a half of a millimeter it's quite difficult so you could just put it on there and think ah oh, I've got the right piece um, and you don't have to write on it so that's another way of creating sort of templates or labeled templates and then you could just do that and know which piece is which so do that if you want draw on the pieces if you want let's get started with the actual building of this cabinet so in the base cabinet file we'll have the back the top two sides and the bottom and then we have the inserts which create that lattice sort of you could put drawers in or you could use it almost like a wine bottle rack and then we have the WT piece now this is for work top and I would say don't cut this piece unless you know you only want one cabinet so you have a top I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this um, of the cabinet but then there's also this piece that is like a kitchen worktop sits on top and has an overhang now i'm going to build or put three of these in a row so although i've cut this worktop if i was going to do it and um, i just wanted to do this one first to get the photos done i would not have cut the worktop i'd have waited till i had my three base cabinets then i'd have glued those together and then i'd have taken the measurements and the depth will be the same but the width you'd want to actually measure that once you've glued them because even the, the thickness of the glue layer can make a difference so I would suggest however many base cabinets you want to make make them and glue them and then work out the dimensions for your worktop and I cut that from a slightly thicker piece of basswood I think it was two mil, so I did that by hand. Actually, I got Rod to do it. I didn't do it on the Cricut. Um, I probably could do, but I wanted to sort of round off the edges and things. And it didn't take too long because it's a nice, easy shape. So you might not want to cut the worktop, or you could cut two pieces of it from the one and a half mil basswood and make a thicker one. But if you're gonna do more than one, I'd say wait to cut that piece. And also, this is one and a half mil basswood. You can make it in one and a half mil chipboard or mat board, whatever you want. But if you want the wood grain, then basswood's quite good. Balsa is a little bit brittle. So it's quite simple to construct. The sides 
literally glue onto the sides of the back piece and then the whole of that glues onto the base and the top goes on the top. So that's what we'll do first and then we'll do the insert afterwards. As always, I'm using tacky glue. You might find your basswood bowed a little. You can always press it overnight. Um, it's hardly noticeable. That one is a little bit, but if, you, if it's really bowed, then press it. And you could use a gluing jig. You've seen me use that before. Um, so the sides are going to go onto the outside edge of the back piece. So we'll just put a line of glue along there and it, you're going to stay, well, if you're going to stay in this, less glue is more because if the glue squeezes out and dries, it will resist the stain and you'll have slightly uneven stains. So get a work sort of put on as little as you can get away with, you can always re-glue it. So just line it up on your mat, make sure it's square, and then hold it whilst it dries, and it usually takes pretty quickly. And do the same on the other side. Make sure it's level and square. Okay. There's enough glue on that one. There's a little bit, I don't know if you can see that, there is a little bit of bearing there. And then the top and the bottom pieces are identical. My basswood comes from Hobbycraft and it has the awfulest sticky label on that leaves a sticky residue. So that's going on the bottom. But it keeps sticking down to everything. So if anyone from Hobbycraft is watching, please use different labels on your wood products. So if it does sort of um, poke out a bit with the bowing you, or it's not quite square, when you glue it onto the base, you can always correct that. So we'll put, again, glue all around the top edge or the bottom edge, whichever one you're doing first. And I'll wipe off the excess and then line it up using as little glue as possible and it's complaining it's going you haven't got enough glue on here i think the basswood's soaking it up because it is a water-based glue and another thing that we found is that this basswood very slightly in depth. Some bits are nearer to 1.5 and some bits are just over 1.6, which doesn't sound a lot, but when you're sort of at scale, when everything's shrunk down, a millimetre can make a bit of a difference. So if your product does vary slightly, you might need to file just the odd piece down, especially with the drawers they might not they might be slightly sort of catching so it's one of the reasons I love Cricut chipboard and craft board is it's very consistent but I thought for once an apothecary cabinet deserved to be made from wood so we will persevere with the nature of this product so we'll do the top in the same way as the base oh that's way too much And really, probably the most crucial thing is to make sure that it's 
the edges are as square as possible so that if you do want to put one next to the other next to the other you don't have any bits sticking out the top or the bottom that might create a gap here on the sides and you can always masking tape it and let it to dry so I'm going to get a weight and sort of put it that way up and put the weight on top so that it just holds all of the four pieces four pieces one two three four five pieces together um, and let that set up really good and well and then we'll come back and do the interior pieces. Okay, so the inside is very simple, but if you use basswood, you just need to be aware that when you cut sort of here, you can have some weakness there. So a uh, very gentle hand for this next bit. Uh, these obviously go are the uprights, and then where we've got three slots we have three smaller bits that go like that and again that's where the sticky the sticky label was so I've got bits of black craft board stuck to that now and probably this piece now won't stain as well because of the glue from that label but I could try using some um, like rubbing alcohol or acetone to get the glue off but there might be glue in the wood and then the wood might disintegrate so I'll cross that bridge when I come to it if, any, if all else fail I could just kind of paint some bits of this a dark brown to match in with the stain but um, so we've got these two bits here and we need to very gently take the slot on each side and start putting them together and then it's just a case of gently wiggling them and not breaking them off and then they, you find they just suddenly get past the point and go and slide nice and easily so that's what you're aiming at. Just take your time with this one and just sort of wait to feel the material give way, but not in the wrong way. And once you've done one, you kind of get a feel for it and think, okay, I can be a bit more confident now. If you do break one, just you can at least cut one at a time. And then do all through at once is a little bit harder. And you can tell actually this end piece is slightly bowed as well. If that really bothers you, then press them overnight so that they're as straight as they can be. And that's that. No glue required. So it's up to you. You could stain this now before you put it in or you could glue it into the main cabinet and stain everything together. For this one I glued this in and then stained it but um, it probably a better idea to stain this outside and then let me get that piece. If you find it does like the, my sides are slightly bowing in you might need to just take a piece of sandpaper and sand this to fit if it wasn't bowing it would be fine let me just see so there you go you can definitely see the bowing down here so I could try and flatten that or sand it but that's it. it doesn't even need to be glued in really so that's the base cabinet and 
if you wanted to, you can cut the worktop and let me just line that up. You'll see it sticks out. Can you see there? It does just stick out at the front edge like a kitchen worktop would. And there are legs also that you can add onto the bottom and then there's the shelf on the top. So that's the first part. Next we'll do the drawers and the legs and then we'll come back and do the shelf in the last chapter.